Hi, my name is Raquel, and in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money, the beast, on your mind, in your hands. Some of the words, they don't translate correctly. And, you know, this whole problem with the New Testament and these Christians is this guy, St. Paul, and uh, there's the word karagma, and uh, you can see no one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And the correct uh, definition of the word karagma means the impress on the coin or stamped money coin. So there's a lot of things they don't tell us the truth about, but this is a live show. It's uh, July 12th and 9 o'clock Tucson time. It's about 88 degrees out, and um, we finally broke the 100 degrees. We've had 100 degree weather for almost, what was it 40 days? It's tied the record like three times, I think 2005 and sometime in the 90s when we've had a record 40 days of higher than 100 degrees here in Tucson. So today it was something like, I don't know, the high was maybe in the 90s with kind of a lot of humidity. The morning was nice, but anyway, so hope you're having a good summer. Hopefully I'll be out of here for a month and I won't be back here in the studios until September, so I'm going to skip a month. This is my first uh, talk show here. I'm going to put the numbers up so you can ask me any questions you want, anything. And uh, if you start swearing, I'll cut you off. There's my numbers on there. And I've got to get the phone a little bit closer. Let's see if anybody... I didn't tell anybody on Facebook that I'm on, on uh, live call-in, but maybe next time I will. So what has been big in the news? Oh yeah, Trayvon Martin thing is going to the jury now. And, you know, this stand your ground law and uh, criminals everywhere. You know, it's like there's so many burglaries around my house. All right, we got to call it, see what they say. Hello, my name is Raquel. What's your name? Hey, I just wanted to make a comment about the Trayvon Martin case. Okay. All right. You know, well, first of all, you know, I'm Robert, and I think I would be like the worst juror because I have a lot of common sense. And I think you do as well. That's why I like to watch you on a weekly basis, and thank you for being on TV. Okay, thanks. Um, but definitely, I would, uh, and I hate to say this, but I don't think the state proved this case. That, are you with me on that one? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is a very touchy subject, you know, to be, you know, I mean, like, I, I have the feeling for these policemen in this world today, and you know he was studying to be a policeman, so I mean he knows in his neighborhood they had a whole bunch of burglaries, and so everybody was up in arms. You know I'm totally, you know my friend is a, opposite me, you know, and but like yeah I'm one of the people that you know believes that 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 it's dangerous out there and. You know, the police aren't always around, so you've got to sometimes take the law into your own hands if somebody's coming after you or something. So I agree with you on that. It's, it's, it's just horrible and it's, it's horrible and it's crazy, but yeah. at the same time, they do ask you to prove without a reasonable doubt. Yeah. And I don't think the state did that. But at the same oh, time, yeah. I feel for the family, and uh, it's, just, it's just unfortunate that Chayon didn't have a weapon, so he could have had, actually used it. Well, you know, I was just trying to figure out the whole scenario, you know. I mean, course, you know? Uh, Mr. Zimmerman got out of his car and started following Trayvon, and then when the police told him not to follow him anymore, uh, what did Mr. Zimmerman do? My friend says he continued on, and, and uh, I just don't understand what happened after that. Do you know what happened after that? I know. With, with, with that being said, you say you don't understand that, and I don't understand this, but the state never really did yeah. win a perfect picture, but I'm just looking forward to tomorrow. And oh. You know what? Thank you once again for having okay. this great show, and you have right. yourself a good evening. All right, you too. Thank you for calling. Yeah, I just know that, you know, like when I ran for state representative, I was backed by the state police, or was it the, um, yeah, I think it was the local police too, and they... They supported me because at that time it was the Rodney King thing, you know, and uh, I, you just have to stop and think, you know, what these police have to go through, you know, they, they risk their lives out there, you know, and sometimes they have a bad day and, 
you know, they just go off on somebody, you know, and um, uh, sometimes those kind of things happen, and, you know, uh, there's karma, I believe, and so that, like, um, you know, it's, I just think that if we eliminated money, that's, that's the whole problem in the world today, is that everybody's still a slave with the money. So we've got another call here. Hello? Hello? All right, let's try another one. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? What's up? Yeah, my name is Cleet. Cleet? How are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? I'm okay. Hey, um, my pastor said that Obama has a weather machine. Oh. And what he does is he uh, did the tornado in Oklahoma. Oh, to get oh. all the... Yeah. Based R- off of... Benghazi incident. What do you think about that? Okay, I'll hang up. Uh, you know this. I've you've, when you got to pick your conspiracies very carefully because there's a lot of nutty theories out there that aren't true, and you've got, got to be skeptical about these things. And one of them is that you know they can control the weather with this uh, high frequency th- antenna thing they have up in Alaska. I mean that's you know it's just not true and I, I can't explain it but I've studied it you know and so um, there's just a lot of lies All right, let's try another one hello you're on the air hello that phone doesn't seem to be working very good this one does uh, oh hello you're on the air Oh gosh, wow, that guy's on mushrooms or something. So anyway, they had these, these uh, on the front page of the New York Times, these Hasidic Jews are in this field near Yuma, Arizona, and they have to grow this wheat real special for uh, the matzo that they eat. This was June 29th. And, uh, you know, the only reason, I mean, it was a big story. They, they jumped over into this other... Uh, here it is. There's more pictures here, and uh, they have to. Uh, Yuma is in the, the southwest corner of Arizona. There's Tucson, where I live, right there, and uh, Mexico is just 60 miles from Tucson. But the, this matzo down here, they're selling it for a one-pound box of this Passover matzo costs uh, about $25. And 14 to 15 is just to cover the cost of labor. So they take, they have to grow this very special wheat to, to eat this matzo, you know. And um, Arizona is the perfect place for it because you can't get, like, mold on the wheat. But, like, you know, you want to get, like, mold on, or fungus on the, on the rye, ergot, and then you can make LSD, which is a really nice... Mental health drug rabbi estimates that these bakeries in Brooklyn produce all that wheat there. Hmm. Yeah. So that's about the only news that I cut out. Okay, we got a call. Hello, my name is Raquel. Hello? Hello, my name is Billy. Okay, Billy, what's up? Um, nothing. Oh. Uh, how old, uh, how old are you? I'm hungry. You're hungry? How old are you? You want a pizza? Ha ha, he hung up. Let's see here. Hello, you're on the air. Uh-huh. Let's see here. Hello, you're on the air. Huh? Okay, hi, you're on the air. What's up? Hello? Hi, what's up? You saw the news today about the um, train that derailed. Oh yeah, the yeah. If you had any thoughts about that. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, like um, I'm not sure if the engineer. <clears throat> you know, there was a strange fire that happened before that tra- that same night, and they left it outside the sit- town. You know, I guess they were changing crews or something, and um, <clears throat> for some reason or other, the guy said he set 11 handbrakes, but. They don't believe him, and the train rolled into town seven miles 
and then crashed and blew up with all this oil on there. I mean, we've we've got to stop using oil, as, and um, you know, because uh, it's causing all this global warming, <laughs> right? I'm sorry. Did you say that zombies may have caused that plane the train crash? Zombies? No. <laughs> um, I think oh, that. Oh, I'm the, sorry. Maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, the engineer. Um, uh, um, didn't set enough handbrakes, you know, to keep the train from rolling down the hill and into town. But like, you know, it was carrying oil, and it's, um, you know, a dangerous. Um, I didn't know it was that dangerous. You know, we've got a train running right through the middle of Tucson here, carrying all kinds of dangerous stuff. I mean, it took out quite a lot of people in that town, turned them into zombies. I know. I mean, I'm really, I'm kind of concerned because I live like right down the road from there, and if there were zombies on that, you mean in crash, Tucson or in Quebec? Should we be or wherever that like, was evacuating downtown Tucson? Uh, I don't know. Well, they gotta make those trains go really slow. They're pretty, they're gonna stop making the trains honk here in town. They've passed a new law that allows the engineers to to not do that or something, and they're gonna make a new overpass at 6th Street or Avenue, so they're not going to be honking the horns down here as much anymore. Anyway, thanks for calling. Don't watch out. Thank you. I mean, watch out for the zombies. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, this is Esmeralda. Hi, this is Esmeralda. Yes. Hi, Esmeralda. How are you? I'm good. So, what's up? Um, I don't, I'm from new to the show, and I don't understand what the show is all about. Oh. Okay, well, like probably in the guidance catalog uh, in regards to my show, it probably tells you that, that this show has to do with abolishing the money, money, law, and state. You know, it's, I'm an anarchist, and, and they mistranslate the Bible. I think that, you know, that, you know these religious fanatics, whether they're Muslims or, or Jews, like I showed you in that picture, those Hasidic Jews that are making a big deal out of this matzo. You know, I mean, Jesus Christ told the Pharisees, to, you know, stop being like this ritualistic stuff, you know, I mean, we've got to get real and, you know, if we don't start taking care of this earth, then it's going to, you know, be really cat catastrophic when the earth, when the oceans rise and start flooding all these areas and, and, you know, there's a lot of people that are unemployed right now. Are you working? Huh? Are you working? Do you have a job? Oh, okay. Well, you're lucky because some people, you know, they they don't have one, and so they they can't afford to pay their bills. And 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 uh, like in North Carolina, there's really some crazy stuff going on there. They cut off like the unemployment benefits, and they were showing this man, you know, an ordinary middle-aged man that's going to end up with no way to pay his bills or anything, you know. And uh, I just don't know how much longer people in this country are going to put up with the way things are because, um, you know, it's not sustainable the way we're living. And we're using up all these resources and, and causing this global warming, which is causing all this crazy weather and everything all over. It's not some crazy, like, antenna array they have up in Alaska that's causing this. This is from burning up too much fossil fuels that um, have, you know, they, they were underground and now they're pumped up and burned up and all that stuff goes in the air tons of this chemicals and and everything and it's amazing the atmosphere like a greenhouse and so when the sun shines on it's like you know a greenhouse gets all hot and and that's why you know that we're having all this crazy weather and like if you've looked at these charts I've got them on my website here that uh, like on glo about global warming and you can see that this like carbon monoxide is just really shot up just like the world population and so like you know the way we're living is is not sustainable unless we uh, like change the way we're living and and stop uh, you know corrupting the earth with all these poisons and and chemicals and you know, you know, living, part of the problem is the way we live, you know, the way that, like, we're living in these little boxes, you know, and, you know, it's not like communal, you know, like the Native Americans, they, mm -hmm. they took care of each other's children, and, and it's like they say it takes a, what is it, a 
something to raise a ch- it takes a community to raise a child or something you know that slogan they have and um uh, you know it's like it's there's just way too many people but like you know they have to realize that unlike india or some of these other places yeah. they don't have social security over there so in order for the parents to have somebody to take care of them when they're older they have to have some children and so they produce as many children as they can hopefully one of them will strike it rich or get a good job or something you know and be able to you know that's you know but if we stopped eating meat there'd be plenty of corn and soybeans that we could feed everybody i mean we could manage things but it wouldn't be um we couldn't i mean not everybody's going to be able to own a car and i don't think everybody should even have a maybe i mean a refrigerator or you know make smaller appliances because it won't use as much uh you know iron and stuff you know and natural gas and you know if everybody had like a communal kitchen you know like a lot of these restaurants we have today like McDonald's and Burger King and that um fish and chips place that Long John Silvers they've got really unhealthy food and uh so like you know we and all these people that are working there you know that for bogus wages they're like slaves so half the people in the United States work at these unnecessary jobs or these unhealthy jobs and so we could easily you know streamline things and modern machinery was supposed to make it easy but it um you know it's made a lot of people unemployed which i mean you know back in the 1900s that took like mule teams to ra- to harvest the corn and so a lot of people lived on the farms and everything and it took a lot of people to grow the food and everything but today with modern machinery uh you know it only ha- we only have like 2 million farmers and and a couple million construction workers i mean people that are actually doing something creative and constructive but you know I'm not like these people on Wall Street or the bankers yeah cuz like I know more people who lost their jobs and stuff oh yeah yeah right yeah i know some really tragic things you know yeah. some of my friends are going through losing their jobs and and then not only that but you know we've got this crooked obamacare now and i just found out today i put a question up on wikipedia to ask cuz the article there doesn't explain what's going to happen if you know how are they going to collect this tax you know are you they know, cuz like the economy is going up and everything and like uh-huh. it's getting crazier yeah it is it's and like monopoly you know they play these games on wall street and um and make a lot of money by flipping properties around like uh, with these programs they have and they're not producing or creating anything and yet these people have you know 60 million dollar homes on long island you know and uh because they know how to manipulate computers and and play these games with money you know and Jesus Christ upset the tables of the money changers and that's what we need to do yeah, today Yeah I went to this um White House White on um, Pine Top What was it? And I thought a white pot um white melon Oh yes I thought that's what I thought you said yeah Oh, you went to the casino up there? No, it's not like the casino. Um, it's like I went through the thing cuz like we're supposed to buy a land from there. Oh, yes. We want to like travel. Oh, okay. And there's like so many million houses. I'm just like, oh, wow. Oh. Like, oh. oh, wow. Yeah. I, you know, I've never really been up there, but one of my photography friends on the internet goes up to the end of the rim there, you know, right on the edge of the Mogollon Rim and he he gets must have a jeep and knows his way around cuz I've seen those dirt roads going through there, but Yeah, I, you know, I mean even Mount Lemmon they're building these $600,000 cabins. I know it's crazy like there's houses that are in the woods that are so amazing. Yeah. yeah like, I don't even know how they can get that much money without like Well, not, yeah, well not only that, but these houses I've seen inside of me, you know, and they've got like huge like tubs, you know, I mean, whirlpool tubs and stuff, you know. I mean, where are they going to get the water from? It's really Exactly. Yeah. It it's been really dry, you know, Tucson is like in a drought, you know, and this monsoons, these monsoons aren't like they it used to monsoon. be. We just had a big um thunderstorm that just like wiped out the TV like bills like the internet and everything. Where was it like uh, today, you mean? Yeah, like earlier today. Oh, near three points. Mhm. Oh yeah, yeah. I I've seen that on TV with the floods going through. We we never we haven't had a decent rain. I can't remember around here. You know, we're like the whole streets flooded and 
You know, I, I took a picture of one the last time I seen it, but it's been a long time, you know. It's like this uh, saying that the global warming making everything pretty crazy. Anyway, I'm listening to some old Beatles songs here. I don't know if you've ever heard them before. Have you ever heard Rubber Soul by the Beatles? Like 1967 or so? Yeah, I've heard of the Beatles, but I'm not... I haven't heard of them lately. Like, I don't, I'm not a big fan, but like, I heard of a couple of songs. Yeah. Yeah, I just wondered if any of my listeners grew up with their mothers listening to this. You know, when I grew up, my mom listened to country music. Oh, yeah, me too. My mom loves country too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I grew up listening to, like, Johnny Cash and uh, trying to think of some of the others, you know, uh, yeah. Merle Haggard. <laughs> you know, we're proud to be an Okie from Muskogee. Mm -hmm. We don't take no trips on LSD. I, I remember listening to that. <laughs> it was so funny because we were taking acid, you know, back then in high school. <laughs> anyway, thanks for calling. God bless you. All right. So, anyway, we've got um, no more real news stories except, like, the Gospel of Eliminating Money, which um, is a bunch of quotations from famous people who believed in eliminating money that I've put together. I came to Tucson like in 1980, and uh, January 1st, 1980, and uh, and I started. I was living in my Volkswagen van, 1970 Volkswagen van, and I started doing research at the University of Arizona in regards to um, famous people who believed in eliminating money. So, you know, I got like Bartlett's quotations, and and I looked through there to try to find uh, some uh, quotations about money. But then I also found them other places and uh, read a lot of books, like in Goethe's Faust, the, the treasurer invents this paper money, and uh, Satan is um, so happy to have the money. And uh, like I said earlier, that you know Jesus Christ said, you can't serve God or money, you'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. Well, what happened to all the calls? Nobody's calling anymore. Maybe they don't like this music. I'll change it up. Let's see, what should we put on? I'll just skip this one. I won't put any music on. Hi. My name is Akal. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money least on your mind or in your hand. Well, we can talk about the 9-11 thing then. And uh, like this World Trade Center building number seven came down. A lot of people don't realize that on 9-11 they had uh, three buildings come down. And they came straight down, you know, like uh, a controlled demolition. And not only that, but like if you look at the debris pile, there was there was nothing there. It was just steel beams. You know, all that stuff was pulverized. You, you know, like you can see the mushroom cloud. There's a there's like ground zero from the World Trade Center. That that was pretty pulverized. There's like a crater there. You know, where they they had a bomb, and um, I, and then they had this molten steel. You know, and fires don't uh, melt steel. So. You know, people, you know, Google this Building 7, you know, World Trade Center 7, and look at some of these videos. Like I've shown you, this building just came straight down later in the evening on 9-11, and they have video of it coming down, and they even had warnings about it. So, and they had a man named uh, Jennings. What the heck was his first name? He worked there. He went in there, and he heard these explosions, and he got trapped in there. And somehow or other, he got a message out to his buddies, and they rescued him from World Trade Center Building 7. All right, let's get another call. Hi, my name is Akal. Hello? Oh, they're not there. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? Hello? Hi, what's up? Hi, um, I was just wondering, you were talking about uh, music a little bit ago, and yes. I was wondering, do you... Uh, did you ever get a chance to go see the Grateful Dead play? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, first time I seen him like was in Evanston, Illinois, and we snuck in the do back door, and uh, 
And then I, I saw him in Irving, California, which was really good because everybody from Los Angeles went there. But that wasn't too long ago. In fact, I've got, got it on my iPod here. That's awesome. And uh, it was really a really good concert because, you know, they were playing for all the people from L.A. And, uh, you know, there was always a lot of acid at those concerts. And, you know, if you wanted to buy acid, you'd, you'd go to there. And uh, it used to be like you could go to Bonnaroo and get get, get acid, and uh, you know, and I don't know how it is now, but like in the '90s, it was real. Well, before the '90s, it was real popular, and then they busted these two guys and, that were making it all. And one of them is right here in this jail. His name is William uh, Leonard Pickard, and he's got a um, Wikipedia site, but he's right there in the federal prison he's got two life sentences because he was making like millions of hits of acid and selling them on sheets you could get a sheet of a hundred like if you went to san francisco you could get them for like sixty dollars and people would sell them down here for about 125 and then you know you'd break them up and sell them for maybe i don't know but like there used to be a lot of it around and and uh it was mostly this blotter acid and now there's a lot of this liquid stuff around. And uh, you can get blotter paper, like, uh, where am I thinking you can get it here in town? But I did, you know, or you can, and uh, get a little eyedropper and put it on there. And, and uh, but like, uh, I, I uh, also, you know, it's like um, people grew up like in, the ancient cultures that like they think the what were they the Elysians and in, in Greece they they drank they had some kind of religion there it was like a pagan religion and they would drink some kind of elixir you know that that made them have trances and get to be close together and and like on acid you experience like molecules you know and you realize that you're just a part of this whole air you know it's like air and fire and water and and you like if you go to the ocean and you're tripping on acid you just realize you know how monumental this is you know the waves have been going in and out for millions of years and they've shaped you know the rocks and everything you know it's like this world is is really a miracle and we're lucky to be here i don't believe that that there's people on, on other planets you know i think that this phenomenon that we have here on earth is a very unique thing that, that like only happens maybe once in a lifetime you know even even over billions of years like it took several three billion years for simple cells to form into sponges and things and and then like uh, I don't know how many more billions of years until humans became on the earth and which is only like a real short time so you know the intelligent life has been on this planet for only like a fraction of the time that this planet's existed and you got to be the right distance from the sun and um, i read a book it's called rare earth and i can't remember who did it but i've got a web page about it and it tells you like all the contingencies that is necessary in order for there to be life and uh, you know of course you've got to have water and uh, you know and um it, like i said it took billions of years just for sponges to evolve and um so the chances are that you know there's other people on other planets and then not only that but like the idea of of colonizing another planet is pretty stupid too because like who would want to live under a bubble i mean it's like that that movie under the dome and I, i've heard that like that guy that wrote that book about it, Stephen King, has said that the dome is a symbol of the earth, you know, and I guess, you know, I don't know, I watched it once and it was kind of crazy. People were, I mean, people were, were not acting normal, you know, and I guess maybe they're like claustrophobia or something or some kind of insecurity you have when you're like in a dome or something, I don't know, but, you know, I mean, Stephen King kind of a weird person and and I don't think, uh, you know, some of his stuff is weird. And But, you know, I mean, they should put more things up like, you know, you don't hear much about this Kennedy assassination, and it's going to be 50 years in November 22nd uh, this year. So, like, you know, the people, 
in my generation, that was the big conspiracy theory, but now it's like the 9-11 thing. And, you know, I mean, I pick my conspiracies carefully, and I've studied them, you know, that's what I did when I first came to Tucson. I came to the university library, and I camped out in my Volkswagen, and um, over by Hill Mill Park, you know, and I even had a dog with me, and I let him run around, you know, uh, back, like I said, in the 80s, and uh, that's the way it was back then, you know, you could never get away with that now. In fact, they paved that whole area back there and behind Hill Mill Park, and, uh, you know, you don't see anybody camping out anymore like like they used to, you know, uh, and I wouldn't even want to hitchhike anymore. I mean, people who don't, you don't see anybody hitchhiking anymore, and you know, it's really gotten pretty rough, and uh, I think there's a lot of these signs of the times, like I'm telling you, that, uh, you know, things can't go on like this, and you're going to have to start, like, um, preparing for it. You know, the Boy Scout motto is to be prepared. So, like, um, you could just um, be, you know, not, for one thing, live in places like Los Angeles or Chicago but, you know, the Midwest is pretty lucky. They've got a lot of, they've got all this corn and soybeans. So, like, if you go out to any kind of a farm that has this corn and soybeans, then uh, you're going to really have to preserve it. I don't know uh, how well it will preserve. You know, a lot of these grain silos now are pressurized, you know, and that takes electricity and to keep it pressurized. But, like, you can live on corn and soybeans for a while, you know, and, uh, you know, they've had all these TV shows and movies about, you know, the end of the world. When I grew up, it was like uh, Mad Max, you know, and that could easily happen. And, you know, Water World isn't too far off. Well, it is far, too far off, but, you know, I mean, the, 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 if the oceans rise like they have been, you know, and, uh, and they have a big storm like the one that came into New York City, it could uh, force people to have to move and, uh, you know, having a huge population migration like that with, uh, um, you know, the, all the damage it would cause would just, like, send us into the dark ages, you know. Oh, let's take another call. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, they hung up. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh, they hung up too. He just agreed with me and hung up. So anyway, like, um, yeah, the, the, if this, you know, we're using up all this oil and and creating this global warming and uh, well, uh, like this stupid stuff going on in Egypt is causing the price of oil to go up. It, it's like a hundred and four dollars a barrel now, and not too long ago, you know, it was eighty dollars, and so. Um, you know, it's the price of oil has gone up recently because what's going on in Egypt. And they just had an article today. This is a conspiracy story. It was in the New York Times, but it it's true. They they the secular people in Egypt don't want you know these fundamentalist Muslims telling them you know that they can't go drinking and that they have to cover their faces you know and wear those stupid shadors or whatever they call them you know the bug eyes and. Uh, you know, veils and everything like that, you know, these these fundamental uh, Egyptians are, you know, how would you like to be run by well, these, like in Texas, they want to take away the right of a woman to have a baby, uh, you know, or, or to have an abortion, <laughs> and um, so they, uh, but, and uh, so, they, you know, they want to tell you what you can do with your body, and what I was trying to explain to you about this, um, Obamacare, how are they going to enforce it? And they were telling me on Wikipedia on the talk page for Obamacare, they're saying that they're going to have like a little checkoff box on your 1040 and they're going to ask you, do you have insurance? And you either say yes or no. And if you say yes, you're going to have to attach, you know, like your W-2 form to your uh, socials, you know, your income tax, you know, and... Um, so then they were also saying, like, you know, if you're self-employed and you're, you can get a subsidy, and, um, but, it, you know, like if your wages are different every year, it's hard to tell how much you're going to have to pay. But a lot of people are, um, it's going to be a big mess, you know. And I was just reading today that they, the 
some Republicans of pa- trying to pass a law that's going to take the IRS out of it. Uh, you know, it's like um, when you apply for this, you know, like if you go to the hospital, they're not going to turn you in if they find out that you don't have insurance, and the doctor won't turn you in either. It's all going to be on your 1040, and uh, you can check yes or no, and if it's no, then if you have TurboTax or something, it'll calculate how much you have to pay, and uh, it's like 1% of your income is... Uh, going to have to pay for your um, uh, health care. And not only that, but like I was looking on, you know, well, how much it's going to cost. And uh, it's, it'll cost you, I think, like 400, what is it? I don't know. I can't, yeah, I think it's like four, $400 a month, maybe. I don't know. I, I shouldn't say, but it's been a big worry for me, you know. I mean, like, you know, we're one of the few industrialized countries, if the only one that still does not have um, universal health care, you know, and uh, so, you know, like, um, you know, a lot of people smoke cigarettes, too, and these people that have to take, you know, make penicillin and some of these other things, you know, like if the electricity goes out for a long time, you know, that penicillin has to be refrigerated, so I don't know, you know, like... Uh, if, I mean, I wonder what they did during Katrina. I don't know if you were, well, I guess they had, you know, it didn't, I mean, they could get out of there, but like, if this some reason or other, the electricity goes out and they can't get it back on. I mean, they had a show about that on TV. Uh, some magnetic pulse took it out and those people were living in Seattle. Uh, Jessica Alba was in it. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, pre- they're preparing for it, you know, and, you know, the Bible is, full of mythology, you know, this Noah's Ark thing. I mean, the earth didn't flood, and he didn't have animals in there, you know, two by two and all that. But, the, you know, the whole story behind that is, the whole metaphor is like, you know, be prepared. You know, if you see the signs of the times, you know, like, um, it's uh, my, my friend who was tell, telling me about it today, but, you know, in the apocalypse, you know, there or wherever they talk about it, but, like, the signs I'm talking about is like, you know, this global warming and and like uh, people out unemployed. Well, she was talking about the price. You know, it says in the Bible that a bushel of wheat will cost you denarius or something like that, you know. And uh, when, you know, if, if drought happens, you know, like this Ogallala aquifer that, that we're pumping all the water out to grow all this corn to feed these pigs and cows, you know, almost all that corn they grow in Nebraska and uh, Kansas and uh, Texas, Panhandle, and every place else, they, the sorghum and all that goes to feed these pigs and cows. And people can eat corn and soybeans, you know, it's the kind of corn that they make tortillas out of. It's not the sweet corn that you put butter and salt on, you know, and that's, you know, this, they talk about this Monsanto thing. I mean, it is kind of scary, you know, what they're doing. And if you eat this stuff, you know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it would have any, if it would matter or not. I think I've seen pictures maybe of, of rats and mice that eat this Monsanto corn and they get birth defects. And it, and it probably doesn't matter, you know, if you're feeding a cow this corn to fatten it up, which is what they do, you know, in these feedlots. And, uh, you know, the cow isn't going to grow a third horn or anything from eating this Monsanto corn. But, uh, you know, they've... Uh, it's just another way to make money and everything. I don't, um, you know, so they don't have to, well, they don't have to spray this Roundup chemical on it, you know. But first of all, you know, we shouldn't be feeding all these pigs and cows and everything because you shouldn't even be eating it. It's not healthy to eat um, meat. And, uh, and it's not ecological either. You know, these cows produce methane, that, and methane is even worse than, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. They, you know, they, they allegedly use this um, carbon monoxide in these diesel gas chambers in uh, Treblinka. Like, if you look up the uh, murder weapon that they use to allegedly exterminate 700,000 people at Treblinka, you'll see that they allegedly used a, a diesel engine from a, either a submarine or a tank, I can't remember, but they had it you see the movies and shit, you know, like, uh, um, oh, um, 
what's Alfred Hitchcock, he he actually edited some of the that army newsreel stuff uh, that the when uh, the United States Army went into Belsen uh, in Germany, you know, the United States Army didn't go into Auschwitz. That was the Soviets, and so this everything that was on, you know, like in Poland, behind the Iron Curtain, you know, like um, you know, Stalin really won that war. I mean, who benefited? They, you know, half of Europe was under communism, and they split Germany up and. And you know it was a big mess. You know I think that you know Hitler actually had a really good idea. He he one of the National Socialist Party program planks was to abolish interest, and Hitler called it the Jewish banking system. But uh, you know I mean and and the Ford Motor Company with that guy Henry Ford was like. An anti-Semite, but you know, I mean, I mean, was Jesus Christ an anti-Semite? I mean, he didn't like the Pharisees and uh, you know, with their rituals, you know, and their funny dress, and and like I showed you in these pictures at the beginning of the show. That's this is like you know, if you read, it's in chapter ten of the uh, uh, Mein Kampf, and Hitler t talks about when he first saw his. The first Jew he ever saw in in Austria, wearing you know the black thing and the the side locks and the hat and all that stuff, you know, and uh, he couldn't tell whether they were Germans or whether they were some other alien culture that like infected the body politic or whatever, you know, uh, with their usury and all this other stuff, you know, to make people slaves. You know, I'm in the real estate business and. You know, you can see what this interest does. I mean, like for three or four years, or even longer. You know, if you got a thirty-year mortgage, you're just basically paying the interest on it. You know, you're just you haven't paid down any of the principal. So by the time, like, if you buy a hundred thousand dollar house, at, at well down now, it's like three percent interest or or something. You know, and I mean, you look at that, and then you know, you look at your your student um, loan and and uh, you know you're having to pay for your health care or find a job that has health care. You know it's like when you're young, you don't worry about it. And you know when you're young, I think that like if old people were, you know, I mean, still fertile, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it would be useless anyway because I don't think there's that many old people that would want to have any more kids. You know, I mean, you're young and foolish and. Uh, you know, you get some girl pregnant that, and then you end up marrying them, or you don't marry them, and you know you you're not working, and you can't make the child's payments, and you know, I mean, it's just um, you know, and then you get older, and then you have all these problems like you see on TV, you know, <laughs> especially these uh, Cialis commercials. I really enjoy those. You know, they show these couples in love, you know, and it's just so wonderful. You know, this feeling of love, you know, and then you buy this uh, Cialis in order to experience it more. They, they have some pretty good commercials. They have another one I really like is this one, I don't know where they are, but it's a beautiful, like, lake, you know, a real clear lake, and you can see all the wonderful cottages, you know, and there's no waves, and, you know, it's like, I don't know what they're, oh, it's for arthritis, this, they show this woman, her hair's, you can tell, but they don't give a close-up, but like, you can see that her hair's been dyed blonde, you know, but anyway, so, but I mean, she's got a nice house along the beach in this beautiful lake somewhere, you know, like those f finger lakes, and I don't think they're like the finger lakes. I can't figure out where the heck this could be, but it's in that commercial for, um, oh, what is it called? Um, uh, some kind of arthritis drug, but anyway, I've been, this is my new 50 minute segments I get here. And I get call-ins. I didn't tell any of my Facebook friends that that uh, I'm going to do a call-in show. And um, but anyway, I've been down here at this Access Tucson for quite a long time. And I started off with my friend uh, Ed Finkelstein, and uh, and I wrote part of this newspaper. I wrote this cover story here about the Kennedy assassination, and. Uh, you can go to my website, and I've got a thing about this Kennedy assassination, who killed JFK, and they caught these guys, they call them the three tramps, they caught them out back of the grassy knoll, 
and they just happen to look like E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis. And there, there's uh, well, there's the Tramp and and uh, E. Howard Hunt there. And um, th these guys were both like Watergate buddies, so there, there's another coincidence. And they were arrested right behind the grassy knoll. And they, one, the guy in this radio tower here, Mr. Bowers, saw these so-called tramps go out from behind this grassy knoll here where Zapruder was filming the... Uh, the the bullet you know going through Kennedy and all that stuff, but like somebody from the front, you can see, you know you can see Kennedy's head snap back. But but anyway, this guy E. Howard Hunt actually made a confession, and I bought uh, the book by his son here. It's called Bond of Secrecy: My Life with CIA spy and Watergate conspiracy. And it's written by his son, Saint John Hunt. I'm friends with him on Facebook, but the funny thing is, they've got he got he has my flyer I made when I was running for state uh, representative. In fact, I ran the same year that Gabby Giffords ran for Senate, and uh, so she was at one of my uh, she got one of my flyers. She knew she knew about me, and uh, she, I really liked that Gabby Giffords man. She was like the perfect. Uh, Score, you know, if you could, she, I mean, her parents like own the, uh, what is that tire company? They went out of business, but, and you know, she's got some kind of sweetheart deal with the city of Tucson. But I got this, this thing, this flyer I made, <clears throat> and this movie by, uh, you know, this guy Jim Garrison. He was uh, an appellate court judge in Louisiana, <clears throat> and. Uh, Jim uh, Garrison, uh, he was investigating this Kennedy assassination. He was getting really close to it, and they sicked the IRS on him, and somehow they got him to shut his like investigation down, and, and they were uh, getting pretty close. And that guy, Oliver Stone, uh, made that movie JFK about the Jim Garrison thing. And when I found out that Oliver Stone was making that movie, I don't remember when that movie came out, but uh, I sent... I sent Oliver Stone a copy of my newspaper that I showed you here, and and he mentioned the three tramps in his uh, movie. I saw their, those tramps in his JFK movie. Well, I've got enough time. Hi, what's up? You're on the air. Hello? Hi. Hey. Um, okay, I've, I've, I've seen your show off and on for the uh, past decade or so. Yeah. Um, in fact, I actually served some papers for you as well. Oh, really? Probably about six or seven years ago. I'm not exactly sure. Tax lien business, huh? So-and-so or whatever, but I was a processor for your case. Um, my, my, I guess my main question is, are, are you on medication? Are um, you on anything like that? Because when um, I listen to you, you babble, you talk about the Holocaust, you talk about the Kennedy assassination, you talk about everything around the world, and I, I, I just don't know what your point is, oh, other than the well, government is uh, a big conspiracy, right. or you know, well, they're going against you, and as a, uh -huh. as a, a transgender person, I think you would... You would uh, I don't know, be more liberal. And oh, confused. right. Yeah, I, I right. Yeah, like, yeah. But I've only got a minute left, so i got to cut you off. But, yeah, it's interesting you make that. But, you know, like, if you look, I told you, I studied these conspiracies really well. And I've read books on it, and I've studied the forensics. You know, you got to look at the alleged murder weapon in this Holocaust and the forensics. You know, how did uh, Laos disinfestant kill these people? Did they just sweep it out the windows like... Some of these uh, so-called eyewitnesses said they did. I mean, you know, they, they lie about these things, and they keep us all stupid like little sheep. You know, Jesus referred to being the shepherd of these sheep and all that, and they keep us stupid to make us slaves. You know, and they, we've got these kings and queens living in their palaces, and it's not sustainable. Anyway, my name is Raquel. 
In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money, the beast, on your mind, in your hand. And I won't be here August 9th. I won't, I won't be back here till September. Bye.